Yo, what's going on, everybody? So, ah, man, I went to do an immediate reaction yesterday, but uh, it was just a tough day all around. You know, we get smacked 54-13. Not only that, we get a bunch of injuries to just add to the overwhelming list of people we already got. Uh, it's not been a, a strong start to the season for us, right? I'd feel a little bit better if maybe we had a really good fast start and then we seen the injuries just kind of derail things, which in part technically was true, at least for like the preseason efforts um, and for what we knew at that time. But ultimately, you know, once the season came around and I've always kind of said it, you know, preseason holds a lot of weight to me in terms of seeing those victories, but in the same token for what the naysayers were bringing to the table, it was true in that we were seeing a lot of second and third string defenses, right? Now, ultimately, we can't control that. A lot of teams opted to, uh, you know, go into preventative mode and try to avoid having those injuries um, just for the sake of experience because, uh, you know, for almost every other team in the league, their starters are vets or their players with, you know, at least two, three years in the league already, whereas for our team being, uh, I believe, the youngest in the actual league, we're running with a bunch of rookies and sophomore players, essentially. Um, on top of that, and by the way, we're talking like true, true numbers, right? True rookies, true sophomore players that are, you know, 20, uh, what, are, what are we talking like, 21, 22 to 24 uh, we're not talking some of the, the older people that we brought in before, like a Trevor Riley that's already, uh, you know, 26 coming in. So truly a young team. We have uh, a, basically a complete rookie coaching staff outside of, you know, Oldbridge maybe. Uh, Sala first time, LaFleur first time as offensive coordinator, uh, at least at this level. Um You know, overall, I guess the main thing that's frustrating is just that every time we have something that we can at least still hang our hats on, it kind of gets snatched away. So aside from talking about the way that we lost yesterday, the injuries have basically been the entire story of the season for us, which isn't anything new. We've had plenty of promising seasons since, you know, 2010, 2011, when we were making it to the playoffs where we could have had success and then the injury derails something um, it's been pretty brutal, but Zach Wilson, for starters, um, he had a PCL sprain, so luckily we're projecting only two to four weeks. I did get a chance to kind of see the post interviews, um, by Sala, Zach Wilson himself, some of them. He was walking pretty gingerly. Um, you know, he was hitting people with the, what's Hank Hill's dad's name? <laughs> If you know what I'm talking about, uh, then you know what the walk was. Uh, if you haven't checked out the interview, I'll, I'll post it in the uh, the description below. But um, the I kind of had a good feeling about it. Salah, even himself, was, you know, I don't want to say nonchalant, but he didn't sound pressed about it, which I guess is the best thing that we can ask for. Um, and then we find out today, you know, two to four weeks is the projection. I would say we should probably err on the side of caution and give him four weeks. Now, one of the things I was going to say when I was planning on doing the immediate reaction was this is kind of a blessing in disguise, right? We can kind of kill two birds with one stone. So the main thing would be that Zach Wilson gets a time to really sit there and mentally go through his cues, mentally prepare himself, kind of get that skybox view of things, if you will, right? So we've seen a little bit of this with Sam Darnold in the past where, you know, he has a stretch of very rough games. He gets an injury. Something happens. We sit him out for a couple weeks. He comes back stronger than ever right now. We don't know what the comparison naturally is between, you know, the mental acuity for both of them. But from all indications, you'd have to imagine Zach Darnold is pro. Zach Darnold. Zach Wilson is processing things at an extremely high level. We're just not seeing that, you know, translate to the field. So, I mean, it sounds a little redundant, but from all indications of what we've seen prior to the regular season, he didn't seem overwhelmed by anything necessarily. I do think it's naturally just kind of the game speed 
and him overthinking things to a certain degree after the way we've been starting games. So we have the fact that his, you know, his processing is there. He hasn't had a veteran to go to, you know, Greg Knapp, rest in peace. He passes away before we actually get into any, you know, meaningful games for the regular season, what will be recorded long term. And then it takes us a while for us to get Matt Kavanaugh. Um, we'll see what the results end up looking like there. But that's our most tenured person on the offensive side that's going to be able to, you know, kind of walk Zach Wilson and guide him through some things. Um, this is the time for him to really settle in, figure out what he wants to change in his process, how he can maximize certain things. And then regardless of what happens with the on-field product by the time that he's missing, he can go through his mental reps in a different way than what he's accustomed to. So even when he's sitting on the bench uh, on the side of practices, you know, I I'm pretty sure he's probably with Matt Cavanaugh. He's with, uh, you know, I doubt he's with LaFleur because he still needs to run the offensive practice. But he's with somebody that he can kind of go through his, you know, what he's personally done. Whereas now he can kind of get, you know, a, a long term view of what the game is looking like how Mike White is performing compared to him, or maybe a James Morgan, maybe Josh Johnson, if we bring him back up. Um, the second piece of that is those James Morgans that Josh Johnson, we don't know if maybe we bring in a different veteran, but we can really kind of define who our long-term backup quarterback may be, or ultimately, if none of them pan out, then we can say we need to go into the offseason and really secure somebody, which Again, well, it'll help, you know, with that natural progression for Zach Wilson, but it's rough. Uh, not only that, though, we find out Jamin Sherwood, you know, he went down in the game yesterday. I actually wasn't even aware until I seen some of the, the post game stuff, but um, I haven't even bothered to watch the highlights yet. I, I'm really stressed. <laughs> I'm really stressed and pressed to watch this with the way we got decimated by a rookie quarterback and the hoodied Bill Belichick. Either way, um, Jamie and Sherwood, he went down with an ACL injury, so we lose him for the season along with everyone else. Um, who was it? Vinnie Curry with the blood disorder. Um, <sighs> the long list of names is going to stress me out. Either way, you guys know what it is. Um, maybe I'll kind of run through something like that in a different video, but Jamie and Sherwood was out, and then Blake Cashman had a groin injury, so... Another soft tissue concern, C.J. Mosley is already out with, uh, I think it was the hamstring for him, and we know his history was soft tissue, at least since we've had him. So I think Robert Sala said it best during one of the questions he got. You know, we really just ran out of bodies, and it's only so much that you'll be able to do. So we're already leaning super heavy on, you know, fresh incoming bodies to the league that haven't been able to, you know, develop and adapt, uh, let's say, in an accelerated manner. Now we got to go and, you know, kind of really figure out what else that we're going to do, right? Uh, maybe we need to switch some positions. Uh, luckily, safety is still kind of okay. So it's really our linebacker core we need to look at and figure out how we're going to replace stuff. But, I mean, we got Noah Dawkins still. Uh, is it Delshawn or Deshaun Phillips um, that might be in the way, you know, that moves up uh we'll see how that plays out uh, they've actually had some pretty solid performances in short spurts so we'll see the good thing that we've also seen at least from immediate results is robert sala has kind of lived up to his value as being able to coach defensive talent so either way i would say we'll probably get back to having a respectable defensive game I think we did have some level of quit in the team yesterday. When you have that many different injuries, let's say everybody, just for the sake of argument, is hanging their hat on the fact that at least Zach Wilson will continue improving development, etc. And then you see him go down and we don't even know, you know what the immediate extent of the injury is. You just never want to see your starter get pulled out of the remainder of the game. You know, <laughs> throw the chessboard on the ground, right? We, we might as well just give it up. But um, ultimately, I think the the reason Salah won over a lot of the other candidates that we had, because I know a lot of people are going back now, they're saying, you know, we should have took the enemy, we should have took the ball. Um, <laughs> the argument there, I think, is that 
Salah was kind of a galvanizer of men, I really do think he'll be able to keep the locker room intact. So when you compare what's going on now, and he does have legitimate excuses that maybe, you know, Rex Ryan, Todd Bowles didn't have, um, you know, Adam Gase. Injuries have been super critical this season for him as in his rookie year debut. But we haven't heard about the locker room quitting on him. It hasn't even been a thought that's come up. We've seen the splinter and kind of the, the rumor mill in every other situation. So I think that does speak to how well of a communicator he may be with his team and how well his message is being delivered and the buy-in from the team. Maybe we don't have all the necessary talent, which is debatable. Um, and, you know, the scheme needs to continue to be tinkered and worked with as LaFleur and Solid figure out what the formula for su success is going to be for them. But um, ultimately, I think that's kind of the chip that swayed him, right? Everybody kind of knows we weren't going to go from last to first realistically um and so maybe we expected a season like this right where we're having another high draft pick um who knows either way though I, I think there was that level of thinking when we picked him as well and that you know if the locker room ends up trying to splinter who's going to have the best success there um of course a lot of stuff is remedied by winning too so who knows if we had a b enemy maybe that was paired uh, up with whoever his offensive coordinator choice would have been, etc. Maybe we would have seen, you know, different results right out the gate. Maybe the offense is crushing it and the defense is something we see that's kind of lagging behind, which would be a very much different perspective for us. I don't think we've seen a 50-50 or even the offensive being the one that's pulling his weight. Maybe since Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, you know, had all those different weapons to work with, with Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, um, so so it's different. I mean, you can make a case, you know, for almost anything. But uh, those are all the most recent updates. The injury to Zach Wilson, Jamie and Sherwood, Blake Cashman. We'll continue to see what happens with C.J. Mosley. Uh, maybe he tries to rush himself back at least for this next week, um, considering all the injuries and just seeing how things go. Or maybe everybody plays it safe and uh, they just allow the injuries to rest and they see what else they can do with uh, the bodies that are around. But... <sighs> Keep, keep your heads held high. You know, I do think Sala and LaFleur will get things turned around. It might not be this season, which I get is tough. But ultimately, we have to have the belief that at least for once, everybody's on the same page in the organization from the front office. We can at least say for sure that we know that the talent that we're bringing in is matching what we're looking at executing the personnel. And it's a matter of seeing what the tweaks are going to be to get the execution. That's been the biggest thing we've been hearing left and right in all the interviews. The execution isn't necessarily there. It's not that the scheme doesn't work and stuff like that. Everybody has been in agreement that the two schemes on the offensive and defensive side that we're bringing in have been proven to work. We're seeing it immediately on the defense. We're not seeing it on the offensive side, but there's a lot of different case studies that you can look at from Aaron Rodgers to... Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but, uh, you know, the Raiders, they were running a, a variation of West Coast. Uh, we've seen different players, different timelines that we've seen results in. But when the results come, they're always essentially at a very high level. So it might be a game of patience, which is something, you know, we've been getting asked to have for a long time. But either way, let me know what your guys' thoughts are looking forward. For me, I'm just looking at progress overall. I don't know what that'll look like ultimately. Uh, maybe it's just seeing Zach Wilson come back and, you know, shred the league. Maybe it's seeing that we do have a secure backup quarterback while Zach Wilson continues to go through them, you know, the, uh, go through his progressions. Um, maybe it's seeing the defense become arguably, you know, a top 10 tier defense that can hold things down, uh, heading into the sophomore and junior year for Zach Wilson. Um, uh, or maybe we see some kind of revelation where, you know, Denzel Mims or Elijah Moore goes off for the remainder of the season, which... By the way, congrats to Elijah Moore. Uh, we finally, I think it was a jet sweep, uh, but we finally were able to manufacture a touch and kind of let him do his thing. So maybe we'll continue to see that be a trend. But either way, I'm just kind of looking to see anything that shows signs of what positive success will look like for us. Uh, but let me, again, let me know what your comments are kind of moving forward with the team. Other than that, I'll catch up with you guys again. Peace.